All right, welcome back, everyone. This is day six of Organo Metallic System, and today will be the, um, the, the uh, last section on um, elementary reactions. And so we'll start out by just um, recapping one of the reactions that we covered at the end of last day's, uh, uh, on Monday's class. And that was 1 1 migratory insertion. And so um, we discussed a sort of the general kinetic features of that reaction and, and the possible regimes that it can be in. Um, and so that, that was a bit of an overview of, of um, mechanistically how to think about it. And then now I'll summarize some um, general points and then we'll jump into the last problem of the day from um, the previous day's worksheet. So 1-1 one, one migratory insertion, which is a general reaction um, of, of this type can be viewed as the transfer of what's typically an alkyl group to unsaturated bond on adjacent ligand. And so mechanistically, you can push arrows um, two ways. And, and either can be right, depending on the situation. But generally, uh, you think of it uh, in these terms, where this um, X bond is being, uh, X type ligand is being transferred here, almost like a nucleophilic attack. And in some cases, you can actually, um, and there's evidence that supporting this, the, the transfer can happen in the opposite direction. Um, but in any case, the details of this aren't, aren't that important. In general, you can think about the R group being the, the nucleophilic component here. And so some of the general features are that there is no change in oxidation state. So this is true of 1, 1 and 1, 2 migratory insertion. It also um, creates a new um, uh, open coordination site, and, and often this reaction is in um, equilibrium and, and needs a trapping ligand to be driven forward. These two ligands, uh, this is a, 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 a um, stereo-dependent reaction, so these two um, uh, groups need to be cisoid to one another, uh, and there's been experiments where you can actually trap them by using polydentate ligands apart, and it, in those systems it does not undergo migratory insertion. And, and so in terms of um, engineering catalytic cycles, one of the things we're often thinking about is what steps are going to be challenging and how can we potentially uh, overcome those steps. And so here are some factors that, um, that, that one can think about when anticipating what the rate of 1-1 migratory insertion might be and how to accelerate it. And so typically this um, insertion event happens faster for more electron poor metal centers. Um, it happens um, in a, uh, with increased rate when, when the groups, other ancillary groups on the metal are more bulky. That can, you can think of that in terms of us sort of squeezing out phenomenon like we saw in reductive elimination. When this uh, bond is more polarized, so when the carbon um, uh, atom has more partial positive character, again, because typically you're in sort of this nucleophilic uh, transfer regime. And also, Lewis acids can have a really profound impact by coordinating to by coordinating to um, the lone pair electrons on oxygen. And as you'll see here, um, this rate can actually be accelerated as much as, as two orders of magnitude. And so this elementary step, I guess like any elementary step, has both thermodynamic and kinetic considerations that one needs to take into account. Um, and so um, with that as a as sort of a primer, let's jump into problem of the day number four from the day five worksheet. So I'll, I'll draw that in case anybody didn't bring that with them. Um, but it's the question just asks you to consider the 
consider this general metal hydride. Or carbonyl hydride. And asks you to anticipate the 1 1 migratory insertion product. Um, so in the first case, let's consider where R is equal to alkyl. Good mixing. Okay. Okay. Good diffusion. Okay, tail. When R is equal to alkyl here, what do you anticipate that the product will be? Enter micro enter micro green search and alcohol. Yeah. We also the Okay, you're yeah, that you're getting um, just of the first step. Just smart insertion. So the question really is, which of these two groups would you expect to transfer? The R group or the H group? Okay. Okay. Um, so the question is, which of these two groups would you expect to transfer? The R group or the H group? So just of this first step. The R group. Okay. And why do you think that? And what's your explanation? H is small, it's spherical, it can often be a good ligand, or can be a good migrating group. So why would it not insert in this case? Jump in. Okay, so uh, so yeah, Tanner is. I guess you could is, is talking about the electronic matching, um, which could be viewed in either kinetic or thermodynamic terms. Um, that's not. Uh, you're on maybe the right track, but that's not. 100% right. So the metal complex is going to be just a good Exactly. Perfect match. It's that, um, oh, I'm going to do that. It's in fact that uh, the alternative, um, outcome does take place. Migratory insertion is typically um, disfavored. So, so now that kind of gives away the second part of, of this um, question, where it asks you to consider the, this hydride. And so, in this case, I'll, I'll just I'll just um, get right to the point. Um, we'd expect um, no reaction. Or, or minimal, a minimal product formation. It would then insert, and then it can go back. And typically, this is the, uh, the thermodynamic sink. Could you eventually rearrange the formulas hydride and hydrogen? The cis, so. Cis hydride, dihydride. 
Oh, um, can you eventually um, evolve H2 from the system? Um, I, I think in the absence of more information, um, it's hard. I, I mean, because we've drawn this so generally, that, that could happen, but it would probably depend on what other ligands are, are present. It's a crater and trap. Where is hydrogen here? Is it more difficult than triphoromethyl group, for example? So this, yeah, so, so this gets to an interesting point. So, so this is the kinetic migratory aptitude. And so um, often because um, the hydride transfer is thermodynamically disfavored, um, it's not necessarily useful to consider the kinetic Kind of kinetics of, of that. If that makes sense. But I think, for all intents and purposes, as you're thinking about what what might go on, then you can just put it like here. You can bin it down here because effectively it's, it's likely not going to. Go. So then, how could we, if we did indeed want this to, to happen, what would be some features um, that we might keep in mind? I want to propose. How, how would you drive this? This is question uh, part B. Maybe I'll, I'll call on oh, Zichi, fresh, freshly returned from China to answer this question. I think maybe adding some uh, trapping ligand, uh, which can facilitate the second step I guess, I guess you don't want to trap this intermediate, but, but you want, want <coughs> to have the, want to drive it to the final product. Okay, that's a reasonable idea. Yeah, also trapping ligand. Um, tune the electronic factor on the ligands. Okay. Um, by having more bulky or more electron effective uh, substitutes. Okay. So kind of working working down this this trend of, of strategies. I think yeah. those are all um, reasonable. So electron four. Any other thoughts? Why is the migration of an alkyl group more thermodynamically favorable than the hydride? Yeah, this has to do with the relative bond strengths of a metal hydrogen bond versus a metal alkyl bond. Metal hydrogen bonds are actually strong compared to metal alkyl bonds. Is it, is it okay? uh, on the order of like 10 kg per mole, depending on everything else? Um, is it connectively very fast though? Just, just curious. Is what very fast? Uh, kinetically. Kinetically. Oh, is hydride transfer kinetically yeah. fast? Um, I, yeah, I think this, that's an interesting point. I guess my intuition would tell me it's, it, it is fast and, and it just goes away. Yeah. Okay. Um, and any, anyone else want to take one more stab at this? So um, one of the exceptions to this general rule that the reaction, that hydride insertion is thermodynamically disfavored is when one considers um, early transition metals, um, which are actually capable of forming, um, essentially being internal Lewis acids. So Zichy proposed to use Lewis acids. If you have the right transition metal, it can actually be an internal Lewis acid. And so that completely changes the um, uh, thermodynamics and so now with this more stable then these reactions can be uh, indeed just forward and so for example a specific metal I can't remember Tyler do you uh, have some uh, an actual example is I see the star thorium hydride, and I, 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 I suggest CP to zirconium dihydrogen. Uh, CP to zirconium dihydrogen.
Okay, good. Any questions on that? I think um, Zuchi was um, looking at this trend and reasoning that if electron poor ligand would make a more electron poor metal center and that that could drive the. But couldn't you say a more electron rich ligand like PME3 would increase the trans hydride ability to migrate? Um, could, okay, so Tanner's saying if you have a strong trans effect ligand, which these are typically going to be strong sigma donors and pi acceptors, um, could that, could you isomerize to have those trans and that push um, hydride tr transfer? Um, I guess I would say that, again, I think these when we're talking about some of these effects we're getting at, um, and like this solution here, the thermodynamics and trans, trans effect in terms of ligand substitution is a kinetic phenomenon. Right? So I yeah. think the thermodynamics of the system would be more in favor with electron poor metal center, but the kinetics you know, could, could depend, maybe electron rich might accelerate. Um, it would depend probably more broadly on the whole context of the system. Okay, so let's move forward now. And um, so, so hopefully um, talking about the thermodynamic control aspects of this reaction primes us then for thinking about the next elementary step we'll cover, which is alpha elimination, essentially retro 1-1 migratory insertion. So you can forward in this direction, and you can go backwards in, in this direction. Um, so kind of like what we saw with oxidative addition or reductive elimination, these are really two sides of the same coin. So I won't uh, go through um, a whole list of, of general considerations and, 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 and factors. You can just think that essentially the opposite of what we learned uh, here is, is generally going to be true. And so there are um, two cases, I would say, that are, that are um, more common that you'll encounter alpha elimination. So one is this reversible insertion into CO or a CO equivalent, uh, which would include things like uh, uh, SO2 or, or isocyanide. Um, and then the other is um, uh, uh, substituent transfer to generate uh, carbenes. And so I'll just quickly show two, one representative example of each of these cases. Um, and, and so the first example, which is of this um, reversible CO insertion, um, uh, is this uh, deep carbonylation example with a rhodium-1 complex. Um, so in the first step, we get dissociation of one ligand open a vacant coordination site. The aldehyde containing substrate um, will then um, um, bind to this open coordination site, probably initially through the lone pairs on the carbonyl, and this uh, rearranged uh, to, to form the uh, metal bonded to the, um, the, the sigma bond that's going to be broken. And you get oxidative addition. a rhodium-3 um, complex. And then now, um, I didn't draw um, one of the intermediates here, but essentially what is going to happen is um, we'll have um, alpha um, elimination or, or decarbonylation here to transfer the CL group to rhodium. Then the um, hydride and the methyl ligands will be cis to one another. They can undergo um, productive elimination to get methane. So there are two steps here. And then one of the things 
that you can, you can appreciate as we're starting to transition to thinking more about catalysis is that what you need to do if you want to turn this over catalytically is lose CO and reassociate. Um, or you can just leave lose CO if you want to cut, um, cut the corner there. Does anyone know this? And this is indeed, as Tyler said, a name reaction. Uh, Suji Wilkinson. The venerable Suji Wilkinson decolonization. This is the topic of the Wikipedia article by another than Tyler. Way to sneak that plug in. <laughs> Okay, and then let's, um, so here's an example of, um, of uh, alpha one make with CO. Let's consider an example that we're, we will then, um, we will return to um, later in this class of, of carbene generation. So these reactions are this general type. So generally, this is going to be um, hydride transfer. Perhaps the most um, Most famous examples of this reaction in the history of organometallic chemistry is uh, here. So I'll draw the starting materials, and then I'll ask if anybody wants to make a stab at the product. Volunteers for a starburst. So here we're taking this tris neopental tantalum 5 dichloride, reacting it with two additional equivalents of lithium, neopental lithium. Any volunteers? Form the five, first form the five formula. Reductive elimination, and then um, we we'll lose neopentane. First, 
this is the route to prepare the first uh, shock type carbene. And so the key um, elementary step relevant for this discussion is this alpha hydride elimination. the other types of um, insertion and elimination. This is one two microcar insertion and then it's reverse um, beta elimination. And so as we mentioned in these reactions are of the general type typically transferring to a, a coordinated uh, alkene or alkene. Like with one one migrant insertion, you have an open coordination site that is formed on migration. And one of the things I'll just highlight very briefly is that for the purposes of uh, today's discussion, um, we're just focusing on, on group transfer events where, that are, are inner sphere. There's another category of reactions where a nucleophile can attack outer sphere. And these will be relevant when we discuss the history of nucleopalidation, the Bakker oxidation, and the heck reaction. Today we're just going to be focused on these inner sphere processes. And as you're reading the literature, you'll hear um, um, other names for, for this event, uh, this, this step like hydromylation, carbomylation. So uh, you know, perhaps it's obvious it, it is worth just um, defining that these are, are essentially the same, describing the same thing so that everybody's on the same page. And so let's consider the case of um, hydrometallation. Reaction. Um, so we'll see via a free center two electron transition state, as we've seen in several uh, instances throughout the class. And then again, because it creates a new unique and coordination site, we typically need some trapping. one of the things that starts to be um, interesting to think about um, in the context of, of synthesis is as you, as this migratory insertion takes place, if you consider the example of an internal alkene, for example, you will, you will create two new stereocenters on your carbon fragment. So it starts to be, starts to connect with these broader goals of molecular complexity generation. So I've shown this as being a transition state. Um, but if you think about this, um, yeah, let me, talk, let me come, come, come back to this. Um, so th this transition state
is, is resemblant of something that will be really important when we talk about the reverse of this reaction, beta hydride elimination. Um, so in, in the forward direction, um, I, I think this, this makes sense, um, how, how, how geometrically this is going to take place. In the reverse direction, um, this C, CH bond will need to rotate to be an appropriate orientation with respect to the metal. Of course, this ligand will need to be lost first. Um, and so, as we go back, we'll need to form this kind of special intermediate, which does anyone want to shout out the uh, name of this interaction? Gnostic Anna. And if you type this in uh, your Gmail, for example, it will, it will autocorrect to agnostic. So you have to do that. <laughs> uh, so this is an agnostic interaction. Um, I should also say this is a, these are, these are a stereospecific reaction. Um, and this will bring us to our chemist of the day for today. Specifically, I mean, I think of this as kind of like an intramolecular sigma complex, right? That, that's one way to, 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 to view these. And these complexes are of a special importance for um, when, when we get to discussing CH activation. A beta hydride elimination, which is this, you know, this uh, retro hydrometallation, that can be thought of as a type of, of, of CH activation. Um, and so, specifically, the system that um, that, so this is, let's just call this like an aside. Um, the system that they were studying when interested in these types of agnostic complexes is this. Let's, as a quick exercise, do the electron counting on, on this titanium complex. Maybe let's take um, one minute to do it uh, and, and discuss it with your neighbor. And I'm sure because everybody's been studying their periodic table for the test that when, uh, with the electron count, no problem. Max 
And in group four, four X type ligands. So you're saying plus four oxidation state. Good. Then you have six to electron donor sites. D0. Right. So they, um, that, uh, anybody get anything different? Okay, and uh, good, thank you, Max. So they studied, um, they're studying this complex, um, which um, ha ha has these properties, and then they noticed something quite weird in the crystal structure, which is that. methyl group, um, the, the bonding angle here looks much uh, uh, narrower than you'd expect. This one of the, uh, and, 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 um, and, and thus it appears that there's interaction here. And so, so one of the reasons why I asked you to do the electron counting is that if you invoke this agostic interaction actually now the situation changes. It's still 14 electron, but sorry, it's still a plus four oxidation state, but now it, it's, you would, you would call it 14 electron overall. This would still be zero. But so this gets into the situation where sometimes just from the molecular formula, using these formalisms can be not always easy to, to detect what's going on. Anyway, so this was an aside, but this was a system, a um, very famous system that, that Malcolm Green and um, Burkhart were um, studying uh, when, when, when they, they realized the importance of this interaction, and then they connected it to not only CH activation processes, but also to um, what we call beta hydride elimination, and, and this will also come up um, when we think about uh, polymerization chemistry. And so, uh, Dalton Green made many contributions. Uh, he spent most of his uh, independent career at Oxford, in addition to the agostic interaction. Um, earlier, we learned that he contributed to how we, uh, how we do electron counting and ligand classification um, as well. groups in migratory insertion that we're going to be transferring most commonly are uh, metal hydrides and metal aryls or alkyls. And so we saw for the case of on one migratory insertion that um, CO Favored um, metal alkyl is okay, and for um, alkene, we'll, we'll, you'll see that um, um, metal hydride is, is favorable, and metal alkyl is, um, let's, let's call it less common. And here, issue for why this doesn't work is thermodynamics. And here, the issue why this doesn't work well is kinetics. It's very sterically hindered transition state. And then for metal aryl, you know, both are essentially okay. So um, this is a key step in many formulation processes, and this will be a little 
appreciated as a key step in Mizorowski um, hack type chemistry. So, um, of, of special relevance um, for catalysis, catalysis is how these um, organometallic um, reagents add to um, alkenes of interest um, and what the regio um, selectivity patterns of that addition are. So, let's consider the case of metal hydride. Um, and so, the regio chemical outcome lar largely depends on the identity of this R group. So if we first consider the case of um, R equals um, metal, then typically this is going to um, deliver transfer hydride to the terminal position, metal to the internal position. And that's because in this case, you're generating a high benzyl, as we saw previously, high benzyls can be formulated um, this way, in the one for this way, in the three, so they're quite a bit more stable than your run of the mill secondary alkyl metal species. There's another consideration that I think is often overlooked but is important to, to keep in mind. And this is something that uh, William Jones and his work on Rochester has, has continually emphasized, that um, here you're also, in, 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 in this regioisomer, you're also forming um, a stronger So if you think about the alternative outcome where you have a CH here, of course that's a very weak CH bond. Um, and so not only can you form a more stable metal uh, CM bond, but you can form a more stable CH bond. When um, R equals something like an ester, and this reaction has a conjugate addition character in the outcome. This is what one would expect from a conjugate from a production. And then with your run-of-the-mill um, Alkyl, um, R equals alkyl. We typically um, are going to um, deliver hydride internal in the metal terminal. And, and this is prominently observed in terms of recent literature and, and some of the, the modern copper hydride chemistry. The controlling feature here is, is to Okay, so let's think about um, problem of the day number one while I clear out a little bit of the blackboard. So this asks, this, this I think will be a quick one asks you to consider two isomeric forms of an iridium uh, cod dihydride complex and rationalize an empirical observation that one undergoes migratory insertion um, much faster than the other.
see. Sarah, do you want to take a stab at this one? Sarah's making is that upon um, migratory insertion of hydride, then your alkyl, the new alkyl fragment from from one of the cod alkenes will be directly in between two sterically bulky um, phosphine ligands. And in the other case, it would be um, I guess it would it would still be cisoid to both, but in a different in, in a way where maybe it would be easier to avoid oh, steric clash. Yeah. yeah, there's certainly a steric element of, of this, but I'm not I guess I'm not hundred percent convinced that it would be that product would be less than the Is it a matter of trans effect? Is it a matter of uh, trans effect Vincent is proposing? So what do you mean specifically by that? Uh, I guess I figure in complex A that like that top hydrogen that top or the up for uh, iridium hydrogen bond is uh, uh, kind of weakened by the trans triphenylphosphine but in B you don't have much of a trans effect on the on the hydrides on the radium. Okay. And then so I think in addition to that, there's also the um, the iridium. Oh, sorry, not one. I just I just that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, I I like that explanation. So Vincent's noting that in A, you have your two strongest trans effect um, or two two very strong trans effect ligands um, trans to one another. And so you'd expect maybe the hydride to be more labile in that case. Okay. This is also just because for B to actually do that one two search, there has to be some S conversation to get the hydride in the right location of the hydride is not very much. So Max is noting that you may need to um, Isomerize a hydride from B to be in the appropriate um, geometric relationship to the alkene to allow migratory insertion. Um, and so this is, yeah, this is a little bit of a subtle point because cod has some kind of unique geometry, and so you'd want your hydride to be in an appropriate orientation to. Cod. I think that that explanation uh, makes sense to me. Any other? Could it be the dishrapid of Is this so just like more of a squeezing effect for the hydride? Um, Zhang is proposing that because the two phosphines are cis, they have essentially a, 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 um, more of an effective steric presence on the, phosph uh, the, the hydrides during um, migratory insertion. I think this is kind of similar, but maybe the op opposite argument that Sarah made. <laughs> okay, yeah, is there any... Do you have three cisoid relationships in A and only two in B? Yes, okay. Very astute observation. Um, Steve, so, so the, if, if you just count, uh, remember that kinetics is sort of inherently statistical in nature, and so kinetic phenomena are inherently statistical in nature. So in, in B, so, so the, the question here, and I, I actually off the top of my head don't know the answer to this, will we'll, 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 we'll kind of go hand in hand with what Max said. So, so can both cisoid orientations undergo migratory insertion, or is only one allowed? Let's assume 
that both can, then the fact that in, in A you have three um, cis-oid relationships and, and, and um, in, in B you only have two, would expect, you'd expect faster rates in the case. I think there are several arguments here that are all mutually consistent. Oh, sorry. I actually want to go back to what I said. So I just looked back in the notes. I made a mistake. Hydride is a better trans Uh, it, it, it is, okay. but but I think your explanation would still make sense, right? I, I guess so. Because they're <coughs> pushing against each other, right? Okay, right, yeah. So if the triphenylphosphine dissociates, all it's going to do is reassociate. Mm -hmm. Maybe I summarize and then reassociate. Okay. Good. Any questions on that? but I, I do want you to have, uh, put primer on this because of uh, its historical importance. Straightforward to understand. It's essentially, just a repeating sequence of um, several of the elementary steps that we learned. So, we have a, um, in this case, a, a zirconium um, um, catalyst with an open co coordination site. You, uh, zirconium alkyl um, catalyst or intermediate. Um, open coordination site, you can bind ethylene or other um, low, uh, low weight um, alkenes like, like propylene, which was uh, Nada's contribution. Um, coordinate the alkene, transfer the alkyl group via 1 2 migratory insertion. Um, that creates a new open coordination site that then allows another equivalent of ethylene or your alkene of interest to coordinate and so on and so forth. And this reaction can be done homogeneously, heterogeneously, um, and was, was um, sort of really the first way to, to open up um, um, polyethylene for widespread use. So 
let's consider um, now uh, hydride elimination. that I mentioned earlier is the stereospecific nature of this transformation. Um, the uh, hydride group that's migrating needs to be syn periplanar to the, the metal. this free center to electron transition state. So this elementary step, if you're considering your, um, your, your general metal alkyl um, beta, um, beta hydride elimination is very rapid if there's an empty uh, orbital, particularly if it's cis to the alkyl. And so um, often you'll hear, uh, when you're reading the literature, you'll see statements like, um, and, SP3, SP3 cross coupling is difficult because of beta hydride elimination. That's what they mean here is that um, any, any catalytic process that generates an alkyl metal always has to um, um, come head to head with this problem of beta hydride elimination, which can be very fast depending on your system. Insertion. If you want to stabilize the product, um, it's important to use a trapping ligand that, uh, and ideally one that uh, you want to associate. This point might seem obvious, but it's worth mentioning um, that, that typically uh, beta hydride elimination um, is, is more uh, favorable than beta alkyl elimination. If that were not the case, a lot of the reactions that we rely on on an everyday basis um, would, would simply not work. Okay, so let's now consider the case of um, a widely used metal hydride
Fast on the draw, Vincent. Huh? Quick, quick on the draw. Oh. Does anybody know the typical synthesis? Is zirconosine dichloride and dimol. <coughs> Some strong hydride reagent dieball is a good one. And typically this process, actually it's a little bit of a simplification, this process normally will give um, a, a, a mixture can give the mixture of the dihydride and um, the monohydride. The dihydride you can convert to uh, the monohydride in DCM. Let's consider um, just a representative reaction, which will set us up for some of the uh, upcoming problems of the day here. So based on what we've learned, the first step is um, the association. And then now your intermediate looks like this. What would happen? What would you expect to happen based on what we've learned? Beta hydride elimination. Rapid beta hydride elimination. And then probably reinsertion until you get to the thermodynamic product. And this process is called the chain locking. Then you can put in geometrical mixtures of your alkene. You have a single primary alkyl for going out of this product. Okay, so now let's look back to back. At, um, actually, let's do these, um, yeah, two and three, but let's do number three first. So three asks you to consider an application of Schwartz, Schwartz reagent in hydrozirconation of alkynes. And then we have another type of hydro um, Another reaction that's going to involve the hydrometallation, namely the hydro uh, silylation of um, a terminal alkyne that proceeds with a, a non classical uh, anti selectivity. Okay, so think about those and discuss with your friends or your, your neighbor.
Okay, what do we think for number three? Tucker. So, I think at its first, um, there's the hydrometallating products from this. Let's just consider the less, um, the, the minor isomer uh, in the interest of time. So Tucker's proposing now that you can get a second zirconium hydride insertion to make a this zirconium species. And now zirconiums, each with beta hydrogen atoms, uh, beta to them, and Tucker's proposing that you'll get selective elimination of um, this based on, I guess, thermodynamic control. that you'll, anybody have anything different? One of the things that you'll note is that in this case, there's actually no, you, you come in with zirconium hydride and you lose zirconium hydride. And so this reaction can be turned over um, catalytically, but it's, uh, it's, it's not as robust in terms of driving it to full conversion in that case. Okay. Now, a um, possibly more tricky one, problem of the day number two, and Z, Chi, can you help us with this one? Okay. First is what?
Is that it? That is not the right problem. No sense. So what? What's going on? Can you, can you like do a second alpha elimination to go through like a way? Okay. Um, from this intermediate? Yep. Let's draw that out so everyone's on the same page. So Dungman is saying, what about an alpha elimination here to generate a vinylidine? And then, if I understand correctly, your proposal would be that this would be an equilibrium. Yeah, but still, that, would, that should give us the trends in all the best <laughs> favorite products. And this know. would give the trans product. What, why do you think it would give the trans product? Because uh -huh. this is the more stable intermediate. Yeah, that's another reasonable proposal. So Tanner's saying, what about if this is a product, but then instead you get isomerized with another irradiant hydride? I would say the problem here is that this is going to be the thermodynamic. You know, no, no, if, no, no, if you're no, relying no, on no, this, no, 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 like here to make a bis iridium yeah. complex, uh, it's secondary. Possible. It is. Any other ideas? Oh, that's an interesting thought. So um, the idea is that in, instead from here, what if we have um, silicon migratory insertion? Um, then that would need to be at the terminal position. We will get a. That would give the same product. Yeah, I wanted them to be on the yeah. opposite side. But. Yeah, I think so. So, to um, just in the interest of time, um, unless I'm mistaken, I think that the proposed, and remember this is a pr proposed mechanism, there are some things that, we, we, you know, some details that still might not be known. It uh, looks something like this, um, where you do indeed generate a vinylidine, which can be formal, uh, drawn this way. Or you can think of it as being like a anion, which then uh, can participate in. Uh, rotation about this CC bond, and then presumably it's it, it has to do with the fact that even though this is the it, it would it would have to be under curtin hammock control, right? This is the thermodynamically preferred intermediate, but it must undergo faster um, uh, reductive elimination. So the late environment. Okay, let's cover um, now the transmetallation. So we, we, I'll, I'll just remind everybody that in the first class we covered um, transmetallation as it pertains to um, main group chemistry. 
So I'm not going to go back through and define transmetallation and all the different types of redox transmetallation, etc. I'm just going to remind you that there are a couple different um, types. One where the metals um, are swapping alkyl groups. Um, one, um, as I said, the redox. Um, where you transmetallate with a metallic metal um, oxidation state change. But in probably 90. Um, 9% of catalytic cycles that you're going to encounter. The most um, common type of transmetallation, especially in cross couplings, is, is this one where you're transmetallating from um, a metal halide. Normally, this is going to be an oxidative addition intermediate. So, N2 here, let's say, is palladium or nickel. You're transmetallating on some main group organometallic. So a Grignard, organozinc, um, organotin. And this reaction is driven, remember, just like we learned in the first class, it's driven thermodynamically by the stability of pairing an electropositive metal with an electronegative counter anion. So after oxidation addition, we'll get this metal halide salt, and then it's thermodynamic, strong thermodynamic driving force this um, uh, uh, inorganic type of type of product and transfer this organofragment onto the um, metal of interest. And so in, in the context of this, typically M1 cross-coupling And one here is going to be um, magnesium with chromatic coupling, zinc and Nagushi coupling, tin and stilly coupling, boron and Suzuki and red coupling, silicon and Yama or Yama Denmark coupling, and then M2. Normally, palladium or nickel, of course, there are other examples of copper, cobalt, uh, iron, etc. And I think the key point is that um, this type of transmetallation is mechanistically complex. And actually, um, there are some metals here where it really has not been um, systematically studied in, in sort of the context of what our modern cross-coupling. So, for example, um, the Grignard reagents, organo zincs, um, these are not widely studied. So, mechanistically, these are the three most widely studied. So, these we know the most about. So um, let's consider uh, the case of, of, of tin, just to get a, a, a little bit of a handle on the, the, um, the, the transmetallation rates with different um, organic groups. So typically, the story is going to follow a, a similar theme that groups with higher um, S character are going to transmetallate faster. And then less within a hybridization class, um, uh, 
less hindered groups are going to trans, um, transmetallate faster. So that's why vinyl uh, is, is faster than aryl typically. And then SP3 transmetallations are more difficult and become increasingly more difficult as they become more hindered. That should hopefully be intuitive at this point. So in addition to the orbital considerations, one of the, the things that I'll just point out is that um, it is that sp2 and sp3 hybridized transmetalling agent, transmetallating agents are also benefited by their capability of pre-associating with the metal due to the occupied pi orbital. So let's just consider one case of uh, this thiophenol tin reagent. And actually, the, the pi um, bonding orbital here can coordinate to palladium um, and, and pre-associate this reagent for the, the key transmetallation step. For SP2, uh, which historically was the most common type of, of cross-coupling, that's the most common type of transmetallation, um, SP2, the reaction is, um, is, is stereospecific. Which means that if you go in with Z-configured alkenal tin, for example, you will get a Z-configured alkenal palladium out. The common theme in this section is that the deeper you go, the more complex it gets. When you go to SP3 hybridized transmetallating agents, it's a more complex story. And that's because empirically we know that Sometimes the reactions are stereo retentive and sometimes they're stereo inverted, and it depends on a range of different factors um, that are not easily predictable. Um, and so this is true with, with tin, classically. Um, it's also true with boron. There's a really nice discussion, a recent science paper from Mark Biscoe's laboratory in collaboration with Matt Sigmund that talks about this in the context of alkyl boron. And so this is what people draw for rationalizing um, this. There are um, two transition states. One is open described as having almost like a SN2 oxidative addition, a little bit of SN2 oxidative addition character. Uh, this is reminiscent of what's proposed in, uh, in, in reactions where you react alkyl tins with bromine. This is the same type of transition state. It's always, frankly, it's been a little confusing to me. We talked about this in our group meetings about what orbitals are involved in this process. Um, but you know, this is I'm just showing you what people draw, not necessarily my take on this. I think it's an evolving story. Closed transition state. Um, so this is stereo inverted. This is stereo retentive. And one of the defining features. That this is uh, this is a, a recurring theme. Is that these closed transition states are cyclic, meaning that the counter and anion on palladium form some pre-association with the metal, the second metal that's being involved in transmetallation. And this you see again and again as a, as a common theme here.
Okay, so I'll just um, run through the case of um, boron, and then um, and then we'll 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 wrap up with the last problem of the day. So you can look ahead to that if um, you like, and then um, that will wrap up the elementary steps. Um, so with boron, this was I think a, a, a pretty you know this is sort of the most common. Um, transmetallation because it's, it's what people um, part the constituent part of the Suzuki coupling, but it was really the most mysterious until um, the last couple of years, particularly uh, Scott Denmark's group has done some really elegant mechanistic work as, as kind of an extension of their work on the organosilicon. And so This is the key intermediate that I highlight. This palladium oxygen boron <coughs> containing complex. There are two ways in principle where this could be generated under catalytic conditions. First, you, have, you could have formation of the eight complex of the organic boron, and then that can associate alternatively we can make the um, preformed palladium uh, hydroxide. Essentially, what will happen is um, this CO will dissociate, swing around, and then the aryl group will get transferred to um, palladium. It will tip first give the uh, aryl aryl trans configuration. And then those will need to isomerize. That, that will need to isomerize, and then productively eliminate to give the final product. And that original reference there, if anyone wants to read more. the day number four to wrap things up here. So we've learned um, a lot of different elementary steps um, in the past couple lectures. And so now let's think about from this metallo um, uh, pentane intermediate, 
what the possible um, organic decomposition products are as a function of the radiant coordination environment. And so I would say, first, maybe just think about what products can be made, and then try to back rationalize what might be more or less likely, depending on how many ligands are on the metal. There's, even though we've learned several elementary steps, it's still a, a, overall like a finite number. So. so let's first maybe just get um, down some of the possible products. Okay, Chang. Uh, probably the cyclobutene. Cyclobutene. Butene, sorry, yeah. Okay. Just that should get off from just uh, simple reductive elimination. Okay. And another possible product can be first undergoes a beta hydride elimination. Okay. And then uh, reductive elimination to give you uh, linear butene. Linear butene? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can also do um, beta carbon elimination. Okay, and what would that give you? And you use the as same gas. Okay. So you call this beta carbon, but this could also be viewed as like a retro cyclo. Okay, and I've drawn this in a somewhat suggestive way. <laughs> Does anyone want to take a stab very quickly? I realize we're out of time. Um, and, and rationalizing the outcomes here. <clears throat> yes, um, for on the left, there isn't really any open coordination sites. Okay, so Vincent's saying that on the left, it's coordinatively saturated, and, and thus it, there, um, the only thing that can happen is um, um, this uh, retro oxidative cyclization. Okay, and then on the extreme case, uh, on the right, you have low coordination. Uh, a, a uh, nickel with um, fewer ligands, so open coordination sites that can allow data hydride elimination, and then the Goldilocks case, somewhere in between, just right yes, for reductive elimination. Oh, sorry, I guess I'm also I'm a little bit confused. Um, so there isn't, so we could do reductive elimination without an open coordination site, too, but wouldn't more trivalent phosphines kind of favor reductive elimination too. I guess why is why are the first two in that order? Why can't they be the first? Sure. I'm not I'm not clear if it would be possible to predict a priori between those two. Okay. Is that yes. you know, the way I thought about it was if you count the electrons, the more phosphines should increase the steric environment but also increase the electron density of the So that would just favor Oh, I see. Okay. And that's actually an avian electron complex. That triphosphine one probably associates like almost immediately with oh. such an exercise. Okay, thanks. Can I do also pushing electrons back into metal for like retro oxygen? It should be uh, it should be redox control if you push the you just draw it into the narrow pushing to generate two of the ones so Oxidation state yeah. decreases, but that's kind of yeah. formal. It's, 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 it's like the the same, but the oh, sorry, maybe I misunderstood. It's like the oxidation state will definitely go down, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're saying the electron count. Yes. Got it. Okay, we're dismissed. Happy to answer any questions that people may have.